Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we got a 2012 Mercedes E350 V6 3.5 liter and I'm going to show you guys how to do an oil change. Now I know a lot of you may know how to change oil on mostly every car out there. These are a little bit interesting in the way the filter placement is and everything. So I figured I'd go ahead and show you guys how to do this on camera. So let's go ahead and begin. Now before we begin guys, I just want to mention if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, just go ahead and subscribe down below. It definitely helps the channel grow, so I appreciate it guys. And with that said, let's go ahead and begin on the repair. Alright guys, so I have you zoomed into the engine bay and the first thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and remove this engine cover. Just slide it out the way. It's held on by a couple clips. It's real easy to get to. Now we do have our oil fill cap right here. What I like to do is just open these up and I don't like to leave it exposed so I just kind of move it out of the way, let it aerate like that. And this is going to be your oil filter. Now I'm going to zoom you guys in here for a second and show you that this is not your typical filter. This is actually a housing filter and we're going to have to unscrew this. And the way you do that is you got to actually have a special tool. Now I have it. This is made by AST. This is the Mercedes tool. It's basically just a filter socket. Um, I don't know the exact sizing of what it is on the diameter, but I do know that this gets a moth. So you're going to go ahead and put your tool or whatever means you're going to use to remove your oil filter. And you're going to go ahead and unscrew it. Now, these don't take a lot of torque, guys. These are on there very, very lightly. So when you do install your filter, you don't want to go crazy and just over tighten these. They will break. They are made out of plastic. And if you break it, uh, for the least of amount of words to say is you're in trouble because uh, you will have issues. So you want to go ahead and take your filter off. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and swap the filter in there just yet because I like to remove it and give myself air gaps. So when I drain the oil, my oil can come off a lot uh, easier and quicker. So let me go ahead and get the car lifted up in the air and show you guys the next step. All right, guys, so now the car is up in the air and you will notice that you will have the center cover here. What you're gonna wanna do is remove it. Now I've gone ahead and I removed most of my fasteners on there, but I left two in there just to kind of show you guys how this stuff comes off. So you're gonna go ahead and remove your two fasteners and you're gonna go ahead and remove the center cover. With the lower engine cover removed, you can see we have better access to our engine. Let me move you guys a little bit forward here and you will notice that there's not really an oil pan down here and this is where it's a little tricky, but this is actually your engine oil pan. Uh, this little square cutout right there, that's what it is guys. Now in all fairness, this has an upper and a lower. This is just the lower portion of the pan and where you're gonna wanna drain it from and I'll show you guys, it's going to be right here. That is going to be your drain plug. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and get my oil caddy, set it up, get it ready to drain because right now I got my light and everything in the way and I'll show you guys that process. So now we are ready to drain our oil. What I'm gonna do is set up my oil caddy underneath and then go ahead and take my wrench and loosen the drain plug. Now, for some reason, I don't know if uh, Mercedes does this for any particular reason, but these drain plugs from Mercedes are typically very, very long guys. I don't know what the whole deal with it is, but you will see here. Let me go ahead and get this off. And I want to try to show it on camera as good as I could. But you will see. Now the oil's draining out. The oil's already warmed up and coming out very fluid like. But look at the size of this drain plug, guys. It is just really, really long. I don't know. Maybe Mercedes is compensating for something. I don't know. I'm just saying. But either way, um, go ahead and let the oil drain out. Now, I try to give the car uh, a while to drain out here. You don't want to just go ahead and cap this off in about five minutes or so. So I tell people, make sure that your engine has been warmed up prior to this stage. As you guys can see here, well, you can't really see it, but I can feel it. My engine oil is warmed up. This thing was running for about 20 minutes before I got it up in the air to change the actual oil. And you will see this oil is not bad. Uh, this customer stays on top of his services. Uh, this car is supposed to get a yearly oil change. He does it every uh, six months or so. And I believe this thing doesn't even have about 5,000 miles since the last oil change. So he's actually doing pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera off and I'll show you guys how to set up your oil filter uh, to get that ready. And I'm going to let this thing drain out. So while the oil is draining, I wanted to show you guys what I'm going to be using for a filter. Now the filter, none other than Mercedes. I love the original style filters. These things are just amazing. And as far as oil goes, we're going to be using mobile 5W40 full synthetic. 
Uh, this thing takes about six and a half quarts, so make sure you have a couple bottles of it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to get this filter on there. So, this is going to be the filter, guys. This is how we removed it, as you guys saw. Now, what you're going to want to do is remove the cartridge. I normally will grab it and just pull up on it. Now, you got to be a little bit violent with it sometimes. Um, they do have a clip that holds it in place. So, as you guys can see... This is our filter now. I love the Mercedes filters. You will notice that pattern in there, guys. You cannot beat these filters. Do not uh, go with the cheap aftermarket ones. Uh, they don't come with this pleating. Uh, this actually helps the surface area. It's a really well thought out filter. Now, inside of our cup, you'll see uh, there's a little locker that'll hold into here. And that's why when you take off the filter, you kind of got to pull it out harshly. So that is your filter. We're going to go ahead and take this and set it to the side. And what we're going to be left with is our filter cup. Um, now, I don't know what the exact name for this is, but I call it a filter cup. Now, what I like to do on these is I will take it and I will clean up the insides with some brake cleaner. Just get off any oil or any residue or anything that might be in here. And the way I typically do that, and I'll show you a little bit here, is I take my brake cleaner and I'll just spray it in there. And I'll fill it up, kind of move it around. And then I'm going to go ahead and just drain it out. Let me go ahead and do that a little bit more here because um, usually you want to get this thing pretty clean. Now, you don't want to fill up the whole thing with brake cleaner and go crazy, but you know, I just want to get any sort of dirt or debris because this is where the filter sits and the filter does collect everything. So now that we went ahead and we cleaned it up, what we're going to be doing is removing our old seal here. Um, you want to use a pocket screwdriver, just kind of lift it up and we remove our old seal. And honestly, guys, don't reuse these. Every oil filter will come with them. Uh, there's no reason to reuse them. Um, better off replacing them every single time. Now we're going to go ahead and take our OE filter and I like to separate it. So I'm going to put the filter to the side here and I'll show you that in a second. And I'm going to take my o my new O-ring. Now on these, I like to take a little bit of engine oil and I will dab it on them. You don't ever want to install the seal dry. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and line it up and you just kind of push it into place like this, kind of stretch it over and push it at the same time and make sure that it's all looped up. Now, once you do that, you want to grab your new filter. Now, your filter, depending on what you want to use, may be different, uh, but there should be an O-ring up here. You're going to want to go ahead and put some engine oil on that as well. And you guys will see, this is our new engine oil filter. Uh, really well made. It has the pleating. And what you're going to do is go ahead and take it and snap it into your housing. Now you want to be able to confirm that it's snapped in. So you're going to put it in place and just snap it. Now, once you can grab the filter by the head and be able to dangle it, you know you're all set. So we got our filter prepared. We got our new gasket on there. We cleaned out our cup and we installed a new filter. So let's go ahead and go back to the car and see if we're done draining. So our oil is still draining a little bit, guys. I still have a stream going. I usually like to wait till it drips out. So while we wait for that, I'm going to take our drain plug now. This is the drain plug that we removed. And you will notice that I do have a little gasket here now. Typically, these Mercedes gaskets that come here from the factory are going to be a copper ring. This one, you will notice it is not. It's actually uh, like a steel one with a little bit of a rubber insert. Now... I actually upgraded this car to this style. This is a regular customer of mine. I'm gonna go ahead and take this old one off here and I'll show you guys what this looks like. Now, if you don't have these, you don't have to have them. Um, you can use the copper ones, just get them from the dealer or your parts store. But this is what it looks like now. This is the old one. We're gonna go ahead and toss that in our oil caddy. And this is what the new one looks like. You guys can see it's a metal washer with rubber inserts and it does really good at sealing now these don't go on any particular way uh, you just want to basically put it on there and push it on there very gently and that is going to be your new seal right there now we are dripping out pretty good i'm happy with how much has come out so far we're going to go ahead and reinstall our drain bolt here and uh like i said earlier i don't know why these are so long I don't know if uh, they're plugging up a port in there, but for some reason, Mercedes has an extra long threaded drain bolt uh, for whatever reason. Now, I'm going to take my wrench, and I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. 
Now, depending on what washer you're going to be using in between there, uh, you may want to gauge how tight you do it. Um, you don't need a whole lot. I'm actually pretty good right there, guys. That is tight enough. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and take my engine cover and I'm going to throw it back on here and bolt it up um, because we are all set here. Now, I also like to clean before I do that. So I take a dab of brake cleaner and I clean off my area here just so my customer doesn't think there's a leak if in case it is dripping. And then I put my engine cover on. You can choose to do so or you can choose to just wipe it whatever method you prefer. Uh, but either way, we're going to install our engine shield now and we're going to meet you guys back up top when it's time to reinstall the filter. So now I have you guys set up back in the engine bay and this is where our oil filter would normally go. Now, you can actually fill up your engine oil through the oil filter area. That's what I like to do, guys. It's just such a wide opening there. I prefer to use it. And what I typically do is I will take my jug. Now, this is the one that has two quarts in it. So it's going to be very easy to pour in there. And all I do is just get it inside of the housing. And you guys can see, you got to control your little pour here. You don't want to go, you know, crazy and just dump it all in real quick. But you can control your pour and dump it in a lot easier uh, than you would be through the actual oil fill. Just because uh, the oil fill does uh, take a little bit of time because you do have your timing chain guides and everything that uh, is right up underneath it. So I prefer to fill it up through my oil filter housing. Plus, if there's oil on your oil filter housing area, when you start your engine to pump your oil, oil pressure up you'll have instantaneous oil pressure right there so that way you're not running the car dry and causing any issues so i'm going to go ahead and fill it up the rest of the way and i'll bring you guys back when it's time to reinstall the filter all right guys so we went ahead and we filled up our engine oil right up here from the oil filter housing now we're going to go ahead and take our filter and make sure that your o-rings are looped before you put this in there and just to give you guys a little side note, there's no way to really prime this filter. That's why I fill it up through the oil filter housing so I get instantaneous pressure. Um, and what I do is I start off by hand tightening this. It doesn't take too long. As you guys can see right there, it is basically uh, starting to stiffen up on me. Uh, when you get to that stage, what you're going to want to do is take your adapter cup here. And again, guys, I don't know what the actual uh, sizing of this is, but I'll link it in the description if you guys are interested in buying it. On Amazon so we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up now it doesn't take a lot of force here guys kind of like uh, what I said uh, earlier it's plastic you don't want to go you know nuts with it I just do once it snugs up and it's tight I do one final little snug up and that is pretty much as tight as she is going to need to be um, it does have a torque setting on here uh, I believe it says it's 25 newton meters uh, basically hand tight don't go you know too tight with it you will crack it you will destroy it and you will be in a lot of trouble or a world of hurt if that were to happen so now that we went ahead and we filled up our system through here and if you guys remembered i opened this up just to kind of get a vent when i was draining the oil um, so i'm going to go ahead and plug that up now in order to be able to check our oil we're going to have to start our engine to circulate it through the system now i'm going to remove this engine cover out of the way because it's actually blocking our oil dipstick. Now our oil dipstick on this particular engine is going to be right here. You guys can see the screen cap. Um, it's really accessible, they make it very easy to spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up my car now that we got all the oil in there. So let me just get in here. And you're not gonna wanna start it up and leave it running for minutes on end guys. Just a few seconds, uh, just let the oil get through in the system. So the engine was running for about 15 seconds or so. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab the dipstick and I'm going to take a rag that I'm going to use to wipe it. And as I pull it out guys, I like to wipe it and clean it off. Let me show you guys the markings on the actual dipstick because Mercedes sometimes can be confusing. but These are actually really easy to read. Um, the way I like to read these is if it's down here, you're low. If you're up here, you're good where you should be. Now in reality, I used to work for Mercedes back in the day and there's a little trick to these engines. Um, I don't like to fill it up all the way to the maximum mark, guys. Somewhere in the middle is fine. What you wanna do on these is just make sure that you're in the middle so you have adequate oil. And if you ever tend to put them on the high side, I do find that they have quite a bit of blow-by and excessive blow-by on these. So I like to get it anywhere in the middle. And after we wiped it off, we're gonna go ahead and insert it into our tube again. And let's measure and see where we're at. Now, if my measurements are correct, I should be in the middle. 
Now, you guys can clearly see we are right there in the middle. Uh, we are a little bit uh, lower than I want to be, so I'm going to probably add uh, another half a quarter or so to this just to compensate for the extra uh, that we need. But aside from that, we are pretty much done with this oil change. Uh, that is how you change your oil on a Mercedes 3.5 liter. Now, this is the newer 3.5 liter, guys. Uh, this engine's been around, I want to say, like 2010 and above. As you guys can see, if your engine looks like this, It'll cover this style engine now. Most Mercedes usually have the same setup. Your oil filter will usually be right about here and your oil drain and everything is pretty much identical to this guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. It definitely helps my channel grow. And with that said guys, hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys on the next repair.